again. Um, this is the second session in, that is part two session of decision trees. And now we're working on regression tree models. Um, I assume you've already watched the earlier one, which, is, which was about classification in, with trees. Um, I'm emphasizing on watching it first and then coming to this video because um, uh, a lot of things that was covered earlier will be covered again and that, that's why I go a little bit fast in this video because almost everything that I'm going to cover now has already been covered. So if you haven't watched that video, please stop it here, go back watch that video and come back. I, I, I beg you to do that, please. Okay. So, um, if you're watching this right after the other video and you were trying to replicate what I did here on your own screens, um, just run this, um, uh, this command first to make sure you are removing everything else that, was, that have been done from previous uh, session. So, you remove all the variables, remove list of all variables. That's great um, because uh, if you don't do that, the variables you're going to work with is not here, okay? So you have to re redo that. Um, so the libraries we need is three. If you haven't uh, installed it, if you have not installed it, just use that uh, that command, install packages three, and make sure you're connected to internet. It will install that. It will automatically download it and install it. We, all know, we also require library ISLR, which is your textbooks um, library. The, the variable I'm going to use, uh, the, the data set I'm going to use is again, CarSids. If you haven't watched the earlier video, please go back and, because I spent quite a lot of time on explaining what these variables are and what we're, we were trying to do. But, but to give you some, so I know we're trying to predict sales, average sales in each location based on all the other variables that are here and based on the tree. Um, the dimension of our um, of our um, uh, data set is 411. That means it has 400 observations and 11 uh, variables. And here are six, uh, first six observations of that. So, um, so number of observations, number of observations would be the first element of car seats. The first element of dimension of car seats. That's 400. We need that data later. So, so first, so now let's divide our data set into train and test data. So let's set uh, random seed number to two. You can set it to any number at your, uh, at your convenience. So split, uh, split, uh, um, so, so let our training data would be sample. Sample is a function that I uh, explained in my previous video. It has uh, two outcomes. Uh, it, it can get, uh, many inputs but the first uh, the first two inputs that are the most important one is that you should tell it where to sample from and how many samples it has so i want to sample from one to number of observations because i cannot have an index which exceeds my number of observations. i cannot have a 400 and first observation here because i only have 400 observations and i want to sample half of them so say 200 observations so 0.5 times number of observations means 200, 200 samples from 400 uh, observations in total. So my training set would be that. And my test set would be whatever which is not in my training set. So if you have difficulty understanding this uh, function, please refer to my previous video. I described it in detail there. That would be my test um, index, index or indices. So my train data would be anything in my car seats data, which has training index, and my test data would be anything in my car seats data, 
which has test uh, index. And uh, we also need our outcomes, our outcomes for sales to um, compare things with. So let's call that. Um, let me attach car seats first so that we can work with individual observations. That's so much easier. So, so the outcomes we want to compare our test data, uh, test predictions by are called test outcomes. These are the sales data because we are trying to predict that sales data, but on indices of test. Okay, good. So we have our test outcomes, we have our test data, we have our training data. Now we can just work on trees. So now it is now let's work on trees. Okay, so now let's let us grow a tree. Again, in order to draw it, uh, grow a tree, you need to use function tree. The first element of that is that what are you trying to regress on what here? We simply want to regress sales on all other variables. And we want to have our training, uh, our train data as the input. Let's plot our tree model. As you remember, ah, okay, no, plot, it. okay, here, plot. Um, it doesn't show you the labels on it. So in order to add the labels on it, you have to use command text. And also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, whenever you have categorical variables, here we have a categorical variable, which is shell block, and just use this command pretty zero. That will add, um, the labels, it's not readable, so, so just click on zoom, it becomes very clear. So let's see what these variables are. So what it says is that if your quality is bad or medium, you go in the left branch. If it's good, you go on to the right branch. So let's say your, your, your quality is good, then you check the price. If price is less than three, 135, you go left. Otherwise, you go right. So let's say your price is $140. That predicts if your quality is good and your price is more than $40, then you're going to sell $7,347. Then it says, um, if your quality is good, the price is less than $135, and the price is also less than $94 then you're going to sell 12500 Otherwise, it depends on the amount you spend on advertisement or under advertising. Um, so if your price is $100, let's say, if your price is $100, if you have to advertise a lot and spend 12000 on adver advertisement, you're going to sell 11280 units. Otherwise, you're going to sell, nine on average, $9,323. That's a very large tree. It usually overfits the data, not necessarily, but it usually overfits the data. So we should see how it does work on our uh, training uh, test data. So let's test the model based on the test data. So let's look at the predictions. So three predictions will be the pre predict of my three model on my test data. So here, in contrast to the classification model when you needed to introduce that your outcomes are classified, you don't need to do anything. It just predicted very, uh, very easily. So our predi three predictions are there. Uh, now let's compute our error. Um, the, the, compute, uh, the error would be the mean of the differences of our predictions, the mean of the differences of our predictions and the real outcomes squared. That is some square error. That is some square error. So our error is, so our error is a 4.8449991.
But as you remember, we may do better by pruning it when we have the training and test data because we might have overfit our data. So let's test that. So let's work on pruning our data. We do anything that a gardener would do on, on trees, but here with our techniques, it's called pruning the tree. So let's set our C to three. Now, and now it's the time for cross-validation. Cross-validation on three is even easier than cross-validation in three. The regression is way easier than cross-validation of trees in classification. You see why. So you use CV3, same as before. You want to trim your model. You, you, you want to cross-validate your model, your tree model. And here, the only thing you need to do is to introduce your K is how many folds of cross-validation you want. Let's, let's do the five-fold cross-validation. In, in the case of classification, you had to add a function here and you say, okay, prune class. But here you don't need anything. You just introduce how many class, how class do you want to, uh, how many cross-validation, how many folds of cross-validation you want to have. Here is five. If you don't put anything, it will do leave one out. So let's run it. And let's see what the outcomes are, have, are. The outcomes are size, deviance, which is an error, k, and the, the method. These two are none of our business. The first two are the ones that are important. So let's plot them and see how which one minimizes the total error. So we want to um, we want to show size of the tree on error of that. And let's uh, fix the type of our tree, uh, our plot to be so that they connect the dots for us. You see it connects the dots here. Here the minimum I can see is size of 13. That's the minimize of my tree, right? This is, um, this is size 13, this is 14, this is 15, yeah, 13. So let's, so we, we understand that our mean happened at size 13. You may get another number. So if you run this yourself based on the, the random numbers you have, you may get 13, you may get 11. It doesn't matter that much. So pick the one that minimizes it. Or if you're not sure, repeat that over and over again. Try to draw box plots of the average of all the outcomes. And that's exactly what your textbook is doing. But for educational purposes, that's more than enough. So now let's prune our tree. Now let's prune our tree based on the size we found. So our pruned model would be a prune tree. What uh, what model are we trying to prune? Is three model, right? That's, that's that's the original thing. What is the best size we want to prune it based upon? It's thirteen because that was the size we got. So let's prune it, and now let's plot it again. Plot pruned model. Again, it it's an ugly um, model. That's 13 outcomes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. But it doesn't have any text, so let's add text on it. So we want to add text to prune data. And again, we want to set our uh, pretty to 0 because we have, quantity, uh, we, we have categorical variables here. We have categorical variables here. OK, so let's do that. It's not, it's not that obvious to, to read but if you just zoom in it become very clear for instance if your quality is good your price is high you say this much if your quality is good your price is less than 135 if your price is between 94 and 135 you sell this much otherwise you sell this much of course the less your price the more you sell if your quality is bad or medium and your price is high meaning that this price is 130 dollars then if your competitor price is very higher than you, then you sell 7,000. Otherwise, if the competitor price is less than 144, you sell this much. Um, and, and, and you can 
do a lot of other things on it. So um, these are the, the, the length of these branches, show the importance of the variable. As you can see, one of the most important variables that affect the quantity you sell is the quality of your product. Then the price then depends on where you are, maybe competitor price, income level, population, and advertising. Okay. So let me go, go back. So now let's see how my, um, my, my prediction on prune, prune data, prune um, model is doing. So prune model. My prediction on prune model would be predict pruned model pruned model based on our test data test outcome based on our test data test data okay so we have the predictions in variable 3 predict pruned model now see what is the standard error of that before to remind you before our error was for Point eight four. Let's see if our prediction increased on our train our, on our unseen test data. So that would be the, the difference. The mean of the differences of your model predictions, real outcomes, real outcomes squared. Hopefully that's better than the previous one. Oh, it's even worse. <laughs> It can happen. It can happen because it didn't see the real data. Um, but let me repeat the pruning process one more. Maybe. Yeah, now we see that. Okay, I, I repeat the pruning technique again. Maybe that 12 one was a random thing that happened. Again, we, we see 9 is the best. So let me check my, set my best model to 9. Let's see what, how this one is doing. Now it decreased. Okay, so it sounds like uh, 12 was just a random thing happened once as a minimum. And when, when I repeated the test, the, minimi the minimization thing happened at 9. And when we set it to 9, I created the lowest amount of error. So error reduced to 4 4.8544. 8, 5, 4, 4. So in, in general, it is, it is suggested that you repeat this cross-validation many times and get the mean each time and then average things up. Because depending on your beginning seed error, uh, you may get different numbers in each trial. So it, it's wiser to repeat this experiment over and over and over again and just change them to the value that is uh, on average the best then use that model. Okay, this concludes our discussion on regression tree models. I hope you enjoyed that. That's a very powerful technique. Um, has doesn't have too much predictability, but it's very easy to interpret and show. Okay, thank you very much.